Hey friends, my name is Zach, and I'm making a game about a duck with a gun. So looking back on the last video, I realized I totally forgot to tell you guys about a pretty important part of the game, which is the core gameplay loop. It's pretty important since it's where most of the fun is going to come from. All it is, is basically a loop of activities that the player is going to be doing for most of the game. Completing this and putting it in the game is the current goal I'm working towards for now. Basically, the game will consist of Ducko running through a bunch of rooms in a huge warehouse and shooting bad guys, with nests every now and then for checkpoints. Pretty simple, but the hard part is making it fun enough to do a heap of times. After you complete a few new zones, I want a way to break up the gameplay a bit, so you're not just constantly shooting stuff. So I might have some sort of secondary objectives pop up every now and then. Like, you have to burn the drugs, look for an item, or play some sort of mini-game. I'm not really sure what I want to do with it for now, and I don't want to make the scope too huge, but I'm definitely open to suggestions. I also thought it could be cool to have one or two characters that you come across in the warehouse, to help give more backstory to the world and be a nice little break from combat, but that's definitely a long way off. Most of this stuff is just thoughts in my head for now, and will definitely change as I flesh them out a bit more. After that's done, there's a few other key chunks of the game that I want to get done. First, I think it's really important to set the tone and setting at the start of the game, and set up the story as to why this duck is shooting all these mobsters. Uh, also, the, uh, the setting is like 80s Miami by the way, so uh, I guess I should have mentioned that somewhere, hey, that's why everyone has sunglasses. So I want to have a quick intro cinematic and dialogue to help do this. I think story is important here since it'll help motivate the player and give context to all this murdering you're doing. Then I want to have a small tutorial to teach you the mechanics of the game, which will be delivered to you via VR sunglasses. It also gives me an excuse to make a sweet outrun like cyberspace themed level, which I've always wanted to do. Then after you've completed the meat of the game, of course we need to have a huge boss fight because uh, I don't know, that's how Mafia works? Also just because I wanted to make a crazy boss fight and I've never had the opportunity. Honestly, a lot of this game is just trying crazy stuff that I've always wanted to do. I'm also thinking about chucking a jet ski race in there like somewhere, um, since Miami Vice has a heap of them and uh, that's like my only reference so. Anyway, enough talking about the game, this is supposed to be a dev log so let's get to the dev I've logged this week. First off, I chucked in some quick health pickups for the enemies to drop, as well as a basic health system. I thought it'd be really funny to have them be stuff that ducks really like. So I've got bread and pea water so far, since you know ducks really love that pea water. It's also kind of hilarious to me that these mob goons are just like carrying around stuff like bread and a bottle of peas. Um, it's just really stupid. At first I thought health drops could be like a common drop and a cool way to get the player out of cover and moving forwards in the level if they need health. Kind of similar to how Doom makes you get up close and personal with health drops for melee attacks. But now that I think about it, I'm not sure if it'll actually work like that in practice. It'd also interfere with you dying a lot, which I kind of want you to do a lot of. I'm thinking it might be best if they only drop rarely when you're close to death, just to give you that little bit of hope. I'd really like to do something interesting with the health in this game, but I'm not really sure yet. I'm thinking it might be really cool to have some sort of bonus when you're on your last bit of health, since it could create some really cool clutch moments. I also started adding some more models to fill out the warehouse this week, like this box pallet. I want most of the game to take place in the warehouse, so it should be pretty well populated with models. Did I also mention it's full of drugs? Because the warehouse is full of drugs. Because everyone knows mobs have drugs and stuff. So I made these boxes that are totally original and uh, not a, not a ripoff of Amazon's packaging at all. Uh, see, the arrow is upside down, so it's definitely not Amazon. And if you scan that barcode, it says, uh, Amazon, please don't sue me. So pretty sure that's legally binding and I'm all good. I also like the idea that the mob has been running this huge drug mailing scheme for ages and no one just, like, no one's caught on and just how on the nose it is. I really love little environmental storytelling stuff like that, so I plan on adding heaps of little bits of litter and graffiti and that sort of stuff to fill out the level. But anyway, onto this cool little mechanic I really want to show you. So we have this palette and by default it's just normal cover and it isn't really anything special. But there's this suspicious looking buckle here and if we shoot it, the top layer of boxes is now free and you can shoot them. I thought this could be a cool way to destroy enemy cover and force them to move, so maybe in future levels it could be in a harder to hit spot like the side of cover or even at the back of cover where you can't shoot it. It could also go the other way where AI could destroy your cover too, but I'm a little iffy on it since it'd be a whole thing to code and since you're a little tiny ducko, only your head peeks over the top, so it's still not bad cover. Another core mechanic that I totally forgot to tell you about is suppressing fire. So if there's an enemy behind cover, you can pin them there by firing rounds into the cover or around the cover and they won't pick up for a 
bit. This could be cool for a few reasons, the first being if I do end up adding limited ammo, you'll have to decide if you want to spend some ammo for a potentially better position, or save it and stay pinned down. But even if I don't, you still have a pretty decent reload time, so you won't be able to kill anyone else for a bit. It also plays nicely into the crate mechanic, since if you're getting grief from an enemy behind the box stack, and the buckle isn't on your side, you could use suppressing fire to pin them there, where you find a better angle where you can shoot the buckle and destroy their cover, forcing them out into the open. Also, before we move on, I just want to make a quick breakdown of the crate effect, because I think it really shows how much Art is a lie, nothing is real. So first off, we have this spark effect, which is important to give very immediate feedback that you've made the hit, and adds to that juice factor. Then, I spawn in two parts of a broken buckle that have rigid bodies, and hide the old one. I also apply a small explosion force behind them, just to add to that satisfaction, which is basically setting off a small explosion, but only applied to the buckles. Finally, I have a simple animation on the rope, which scales it outwards and moves it down, it doesn't look great, but I plan on making it better later. I just want a simple animation since simulating an actual rope is pretty expensive and unnecessary. Here's how it looks all together again. I guess it's not something you really think about when playing games, since you're usually pretty immersed, but all games are just made up of little tricks like this that, when they're all put together, they seem really convincing. Another issue I fixed this week was bullets going through things. It's kind of an infamous issue with collision detection on fast moving objects, regardless of game engine. And you've probably encountered it before, either in your own games or games you might have played. This is because collision detection only runs in discrete steps. Please allow me to explain with an overcomplicated example that no one asked for. Say we have this bullet. She's a good bullet, she pays her taxes, and works hard at her job. Today Miss Bullet has the flu though, so she's moving really slowly. On frame one, Miss Bullet is here, and she checks her collider and goes, hmm, yep, no walls here, all good. It then goes, okay, my code says I need to move a small amount in this direction, so it does. Now it checks its collider again and goes, oh crap, I'm in a wall. So it's moved out of the wall and goes on its way. All is good, but now Miss Bullet has taken a bunch of prescription medication and is feeling great again. She starts off like before when she did when she was slow, checks her collider and moves on a merry way. But now because she's moving faster, she's moved past the wall. But because there's no wall in her collider, she doesn't know any better and drifts off into oblivion. And if we go frame by frame in Unity, we can actually see this happening. There are a few ways to fix this, the obvious being run the game at a higher frame rate so we can check collisions more. But unfortunately, we can't harass all players into getting a better PC. There's also a few in-engine options to help with this in Unity, but they can be inconsistent and inefficient. So instead, we need to do something a bit crazy. Something maybe no other Unity developer has done ever. We need to kill the rigid body component. Absolutely mental, right? I know, I know. I'm not crazy though, uh, just bear with me for a sec. So back to the example, we need some way to check collisions between frames. Instead, we could use Old Mate Raycast to shoot a laser from our previous position to our current one and check if the laser hits anything. I'll chuck the code and more detailed instructions down in the description if you're interested. And this is just a simplified version of the ancient and sacred don't go through things grouped on the Unify community, which is over a decade old now. Also, I have a question for you, the viewer. Something I realized this week is that when you're peeking from cover, your aim isn't the same as it was from behind cover, so you have to compensate a little bit to where you want to hit. This totally wasn't intentional, but I'm thinking of keeping it since it addresses one of my complaints about cover shooters, which is that you can peek with crazy accuracy to wherever you want. I'm wondering if I should keep it because of this, and honestly, it's not too bad once you get used to it. Although it does break convention, and you might not be expecting it if you're playing. I'd love to hear what you think in a comment below. Also, what did you think of the more technical stuff in the video? I think the next one will be more progress stuff since I kinda maybe made this video to procrastinate exams. One last thing, I just want to say the response to the last devlog has been really awesome. I was really nervous that he'd get like 10 views and no one would care, so thanks to everyone for supporting small creators like me by sorting by new on reddit and that sort of stuff. And thank you for all the nice comments. And thanks to, and thanks to my friends for, for being so nice and supportive. I, I love you guys. The, the ASMR is for Alan because uh, he made the bad guy model and it's uh, 